Oh, good morning, folks. Long time no see. Especially long not time no see in uh, the kit and at the museum. As I've said in previous videos, I won't bore you with it, but it's been a busy old time. Changed jobs and I've uh, got a couple of weeks off now. So, morning. Getting prepared for Christmas and uh, really looking forward to just not doing anything much really. Obviously I'm here today and uh, I'm here for another couple of days, uh, tomorrow in fact, and then one day next week, just before Christmas itself. So with luck, I'll have a couple more videos. I'm running the Trevithic locomotive today. So I think we might show a couple of shots of me set, getting that set up, because you've not seen the engines for a while. And then we'll take a little walk round town if I get time, which hopefully will. I'm, I wanted to do that last week. I was in last week. And as you can see from the weather, it's not the best. It's really cold, very foggy. So it's not the best for showing the town, but uh, I just didn't get time last week. I was running late and the engines take so much effort. But anyway, let's crack on with this and then hopefully, if I get a shift on, we'll go and have a look. See you in a minute. Right then, it's a little dark under here this morning. But you've all seen this before. The old 1802 Trevithick Colebrookdale locomotive replica. So I'll just show you what I need to do. I'll perhaps set the camera up so you can see a couple of the jobs and we'll perhaps speed that bit up because it takes a little while. But just to remind you all, so for the basics of the engine, this is the cylinder and piston rod there. That is attached to the yoke that runs along here. And so obviously as the piston rod moves in and out, the yoke shunts backwards and forwards along the two rails. And you can see on either side, there's a draw bar, one connected to the flywheel at the back there, and one connected to the drive cog on this side, which obviously then through the gear arrangement drives the two wheels on this side. So it's only driven on this side of the engine. So jobs for the morning down here, we've got the Got the fire down there, so obviously that needs a little bit of a rake and clean out from yesterday. Then we need to get a fire going. There's my water gauge, as you can see it's uh, down a bit low, so we'll probably put a bit more water in there. And then the dirty job is around the front here. So we'll open up the smoke box door there, and that needs a really good clean out. I'll show you what's inside there as well with exactly how the fire at the front um, how it works, how it heats the boiler, and then obviously exits out the chimney up there. So I'll probably set the camera up down here, but bear with me a minute. I'll uh, switch you off, get sorted, get a pair of gloves on, because you get filthy hands anyway, but might as well try and minimise the uh, amount of grease and grime on my fingers. All right, so we'll get you set up. See you in a second. Okay, there we go. So that's the smoke box door open. You can see it just lifts up like a big flap. So if we have a look inside, hopefully the light will allow. So that's looking down the main boiler tube. And I'm trying to see, you can't quite see the day. I can see the daylight, it doesn't show up on camera. But basically the far end of that hole is, oh, you can just see the daylight now if I lift the camera up. Where the daylight is, that is the hatch to the firebox. So as you can see, the fire is just behind that baffle plate. So you light the fire in there, obviously the heat builds up. We close the firebox door. So you see underneath you've got the ash pan, which allows air under the fire to keep the heat going. The hot gas is then passed through that main boiler tube. It passes over these two cross tubes into the general smoke box area. And then the hot gases flow down these many sort of small tubes and those tubes run all the way to the back 
to the chimney stack. So the idea is, with your fire going, air getting in from underneath the fire, from the ash pan, with the door then, firebox door shut, the smoke will naturally be drawn through into the smoke box, through the tubes and up out the chimney. Now when the engine's running, the exhaust uh, steam from the cylinder also rushes up the chimney, that's where the chuff chuff sound comes from. And that helps draw the fire because you're blasting steam up the pipe, it's drawing air through this circuit. And to get the fire going, we actually put an electric blower onto a port on the chimney to blow air up the chimney and again, that encourages that circulation. So my first job now is to clean all this out. It's full of muck and soot and the tubes get sooted up. And when the soot forms like a cake, almost like on your pipes for the uh, pipe smokers watching, that cake can actually act as a bit of an insulation barrier. And we don't want that. We want to transfer the heat to the water, not retain it in the pipe and send it up the chimney. So first job, sweep this out, sweep the pipes out and get the fire lit. Right, let's crack on. All right then, let's get on with the dirty work. Have brush, we'll clean. Now this stuff isn't pleasant. So, probably should wear a mask. But well, I've done this enough times now. But basically the trick is just to try and hold your breath. Next job is to get the, uh, the long rod with the brush on the end, brush the tubes. And we use this. Okay, job done. Right, we've just got a bit more soot to get out of here. This is quite fine black stuff now. It's come out of the tubes. You can see how much has come out. And if we hadn't have swept that out, obviously interferes with the efficiency of the heat transfer so it's an important job and in the, the days of the big steam locomotives this would have been done pretty much daily depending on the schedule of the engine big difference with those is you couldn't stand there with a rod with a, a sort of a brush on the end of a pole obviously those engines were huge and the, uh, the man responsible, the smoke box was actually, obviously substantially bigger. He would actually get into the smoke box, it was that big. And they'd use a steam lance. So they'd have an engine that had probably just come in, ready for its clean up. And the excess steam and pressure they'd use from that engine to use the lance and they'd blow those out using high pressure steam. But, well, I say a lot quicker. They had many more tubes, but certainly more efficient. Right, job done. Close the smoke box back up. Onto the fire. Okay then, the fire box. So, I've saved you some uh, board and base and I've just raked that out as best as I can off camera. Same, pretty much same as the uh, smoke box. It's just getting all the old ash 
old unburnt bits of coal and clinker and what have you out of there. So that's pretty clear now. We've got a slight issue with the engine in the fire bars. Over time, the heat warps the bars and you can't really see them on camera, but if you imagine a grate in a fire, so you've got the ash pan under here and that's where your oxygen is getting in under the fire once the door is shut. And then you've got a set of bars running across and that's where your fire sits on top of. Well, they've sunk quite a lot and need replacing. They've almost dropped to the bottom of the ash pan. Now, it was like this last week and the, the engine still ran perfectly and it ran yesterday as well, so not so much of a problem. But anyway, so different drivers have different ways of putting their fires on. Personally, for me, I like to put a little bit of a layer of coal, not too much and only the small bits. We don't want great big chunks of coal in there. And again, not too much because we don't want to restrict all of the oxygen flow from underneath. It's very awkward firebox position is this. Um, Trevithic re revised this with his next engines because he realised this just wasn't practical being down so low and you can't really get at it. Okay, so a layer of coal. And the guys on the engine yesterday very kindly put a stack of chopped wood on the top of the smoke box, which will basically retains a lot of heat. It's stone cold now, but it would have been pretty much warm most of the night. So this wood is good and dry, which, because this engine lives outside, can be a problem. This time of year, everything's damp. It can be a real struggle to get your fire going. Right, so I'm just going to pause. While I get that all loaded, we'll get it lit and then, what time is it? Yep, we'll go and have a little wander around town once the fire's going. Okay, so fire is built and I'm going to use a little bit of assistance with the fire lighter. And fingers crossed we can get this going because it is very damp today. Okay. Right, let's get the door shut. Next step is to put the electric fan on. Uh, that makes a bit of noise, so I'll switch us off here. Like I say, fingers crossed the engine gets going, or at least the fire takes well. And then we'll have a little wander around town. Okay, there we go. Can you hear that humming away? Although that is the blower, not the actual engine. So I'll switch the camera around and we'll have a little wander through town. You see some of the decorations. We um, open in 20 minutes, so it's going to be pretty quiet. It's just the staff doing their startup bits and bobs. And as you can see, it's still murky as anything. But uh, my apologies, but it's going to be better than nothing. So I'll spin the camera around. I'll shut up talking. I'll put some nice Christmas music on in the background. And we'll just see what, uh, what the place looks like.
Hope you enjoyed that like i say it's a little bit dull and things aren't really showing up too well but uh, i think it's going to be another busy day in this uh, lead up to christmas so that just leaves uh, me to say from me to you and your families i hope you have a wonderful christmas and a very good new year and i'll see you soon Ta -ra.